Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Somebody asked me in one of the comments, could I sort of explain a little bit better on the constant method versus the progressive method. So I'll just sort of go over some of the geometry. This is the uh, constant method here. We use this type of uh, depth gauge. This was invented by uh, Oregon. Uh, Joseph Cox back in 1965 and put a patent on that one. They still use this type of gauge today, so still didn't invent it. They just, uh, like everyone, they just copy. You now the patent's expired, so everyone just copies it. So what they mean by constant is that it measures 0.65 of a millimetre on a 3.8 chain. So constantly, that's all you're ever going to get, meaning that from the top of the tooth, the working corner, so the top of the tooth there to the actual depth gauge will be 0.65 of a millimetre. The progressive depth gauge works a little bit different than that. It really doesn't make that much difference until the tooth is worn down about around 50%. A tooth on a 3.8 chain is approximately 10 millimetres in length. So when that tooth wears say up to four millimeter you really should be using a progressive depth gauge like this one from still or husqvarna or a guy called ray cartman in 1968 invented the philo plate and put a worldwide patent on that and that's a very very intelligent man carlton were way way ahead of everyone else back in the day husqvarna uh had been making this type of gauge for a long time but i believe there was a lot of pressure put on still from some of the big Arbus groups over in America as to why they had never ever made one of these. Some people turn around and say that, you know, you get an extra 20% out of your chain if you use one, so why would they want to advertise that or make them because they'll make you buy more chains. Anyway, who knows. So let's talk a bit about the geometry. I actually measured the tooth from this point to this point and then again from the witness mark from this point to this point now for those that are not too familiar with the witness mark or not too sure that's a little mark on the back of the tooth that there that mark there tells you that's the end of the life so a brand new tooth on a 3-8 chain is close enough to 10 millimeters in length and normally that witness mark is set at about three millimeters. So we've got about seven millimeters of tooth. So when that tooth wears down to about 50%, this type of gauge, you really don't want to be using this. You really need to go to a progressive depth gauge. And as I said, that's one here. Now the way that it works is this little part here where I'm pointing to sits on the tie bar. And that's where I've got the ruler, tie strap I should say. So that's sitting on the tie strap and if we were to measure the distance from there to the point of the depth gauge on a brand new 3.8 tooth it's approximately by using that on this gauge it's approximately about 14 mil on the soft setting so there's two settings a hard and soft i measured on the soft setting so what i'm saying is the distance from there to here is approximately 14 mil from there to there okay then I measure another distance I measure the distance from the point of the depth gauge to the point of the tooth which is only around about six millimeters brand new okay when we get to the end of the life which is way down here it's approximately close enough to 14 millimeters 13.5 so when we talk about the attack angle, a lot of people are talk about the attack angle. What that actually means is that this angle from the point of the tooth to this point here is approximately 14 to 15 degrees. It depends on the manufacturer, so it can vary a little bit, but it's around 14, 15 degrees, give or take. As that chain wears down about halfway, that angle reduces to about 12 degrees. By the time it reaches end of life, which is down here, it's about 8 degrees. As that gauge lowers down, as that tooth is filed, 
the depth gauge will start to protrude out of the little tiny square. And that's where you put the file over the top. You can see all the file marks over the top. And that's where you'll file it down. There's not much difference until the tooth wears down to about 50, 60%. But when it does wear down, then you'll get the benefit of it. Now, a few other people turn around and say, well, what's the... Now, the other thing is, if we turn around and say that this type of gauge is set at 0.65, and if we turn around and say that if we were to measure the tooth from this point to this point and then to measure from there at, at the witness mark to, to there, we would find that the height of the tooth will be reduced by the time you get down to the witness mark 1.4 millimetres because the angle's roughly 10 degrees. So this angle on top, this sloping angle is about 10 degrees. So that's how much the difference between brand new and end of life, 1.4 millimetre. But we don't file the depth gauge down 1.4 millimetre. It doesn't work that way. Roughly works out that we file the depth gauge down about 0.9 millimetres. But if we file that down 0.9 millimetres from brand new to end of life, plus the 0.65 millimetres that we've got here, we end up with a total of end of life of 1.55 millimetres. So, when we're filing or grinding our tooth and we get to about halfway, this type of gauge really kicks in. And it'll take off the right amount. Now, the reason I'll, you can ask, what what difference does it make? What, why? What, why do you have to uh, use a progressive gauge? I've been using one of these others for years. Well, maybe something that you don't know. So maybe I can tell you something that you don't. When a chain strikes timber, the tooth does not sit straight. So if that's the tooth, and it's on the bottom of the chainsaw, so it's come around, it's on the top, going round the nose and you're just about ready to sink it in the timber. The moment that it hits timber, bang, it kicks back. It takes a chip of timber out. So you get this rocking motion. All the teeth have got this rocking motion on the bottom as they're striking timber. This rocking motion gets more and more violent as the tooth wears down because reason being... But if you look here, this is the point of, of where it starts to rock. But while the tooth is way, way in front of that, the rocking motion is not as violent. And especially when we get around this area here, it's going to rock very easily. So it's going to kick. So if we can file a depth gauge down a little bit more, the tooth can still get a good bite because it's going to be very violent. It's going to really rock. And if you don't file your depth gauges, then you won't be cutting very much timber at all. If you file them too deep and you also run a loose chain, all that's going to happen is that, is that chainsaw is going to bounce up and down and not cut, cut very good at all. The other thing that can also happen is, believe it or not, when the chain wears down, it actually can cut much better because the tooth is a lot narrower. Because of this taper that a tooth has, as the tooth wears down, there's less tooth that has to bite into the tooth because it's that taper is for clearance, the same as, it, same as it, you've got a slope on top of 10 degrees is for clearance. So there's cowboys out there that will look at a tooth and say, oh, I just run a file over it. Near enough's good enough. No, you don't want to be doing that. You want to be doing it properly. All as it costs you, worst case scenario, you buy one of these. It does four different sizes, quarter inch, three eight, 
0.325 and 3.8 pico. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you buy one of these as well as the first gauge and you've got the best of both worlds. You can use this for the first couple of times. You've also got little windows in there to check your 30 degree angle if you place it on top. You can look in the window to make sure that you're filing or grinding uh, at the correct angle. This is chain specific. This is for a 3.8 chain, standard 3.8 chain and standard 3.8 only. It's not for, for 3.8 low profile or 3.25 or 4.04. There's five of these in the series, so it's quarter inch pico. Next size up is 3.8 low profile, then 0.325, then 3.8 standard, then 4.04. They're about $11 a gauge here in Australia. So it's not a lot of money. But if you can get an extra 20% out of your chain because you did the correct maintenance and it's all worth it. So I hope that explanation, and I'll just go over it briefly before the end. When I check the height of the tooth compared to end of life of tooth, there's a variation of 1.4 millimeters so that the height of the tooth will decrease by 1.4 millimeters during its life. But the raker will not decrease by 1.4 millimeters on a progressive depth gauge. It'll be about 0.9 of a millimeter. Now on the Husqvarna, the Husqvarna gauge is not as aggressive because it depends on the length. The Husqvarna gauge actually goes a lot further down. It goes onto the next drive link. So it's a lot longer, probably about six millimeters in length longer. So it's not as aggressive. So look, it's up to you what gauge you want. I'm only explaining how these progressive depth gauges work. It's up to you uh, whether you buy them or not. I would highly recommend using one once you get down two or three millimeters, start using the progressive. They're very easy to use. Uh, they just sit on top and it's just a matter of running the file over the top. So simple. Couldn't be any more simpler than that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up or whatever. Uh, bye for now.